Hello, my friends, Evolution Energy Arts family. So we have our first beast, the first Eastern Pacific hurricane of 2018 is a Category 4 monster. And uh, thankfully, it should stay off land and not make any landfall because it would be a, a big one if it did make landfall. And so, as it says here, well, that escalated quickly. Hurricane Aletta became the first tropical storm of the eastern Pacific hurricane season on Thursday, and by Friday morning, it had spun up into a Category 4 monster that quickly. And this storm might not be done yet, ramping up in intensity. And the good news, as I said, is that this is going to stay off the coast, but it's the speed in which it went up in strength is almost unprecedented and we can see where it is right here and this is an abnormally hot area right here as far as the water temperatures being up almost around 90 degrees and you know there might be something going on there it might not all be just simply uh, the way the water is flowing with the wind currents and all it could actually be something going on underwater, perhaps volcano related. And that's another thing for us to take into consideration. What effects all these underwater volcanoes going off are going to have on storm intensity. When we know, when we had that strange anomalous reading back, gosh, that was like April or March, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, which to me could only be explained by there being a volcano going off there. And some have theorized that there's actually a super volcano building in the Gulf of Mexico. And so if that's the case, well, number one, a super volcano is, is bad enough. You know, if that goes off, that changes everything. As far as weather patterns, we'll immediately go into a uh, basically what will be like a nuclear winter and you know we'll have just even worse situations developing than we that we currently have but even if it isn't a super volcano but just perhaps a series of volcanoes coming awake that could definitely intensify any storms that go on up into the gulf and uh, as what is being borne out now by the data showing that the ocean temperatures this season were definitely lower than they've been the last four or five years, which I could attest to because I felt like, oh my, it's, it's so freaking cold here in, you know, where I am in Florida, even in March in the water, it felt very, very cold for March. Felt more like you're going in the water to me in uh, January or early February. Not only now has it gotten to be really nice and comfortable again. Uh, so it, it does feel like it's warming up quickly now. And so when the storms do make their way in there, then they'll, they'll intensify. And, that, and, and as you can see right here, off to the east of that monstrous uh, Category 4 storm, Aletta, there's another one forming as well. And so we shall see how this develops and we shall see what will happen with the flow and uh, hopefully they will stay out in the water and not make any sort of landfall because definitely a very potent storm there so we have huge plumes of saharan dust traveling all over the atlantic several plumes are hitting southeastern europe as well so scientists working at cams a part of the EU's Earth Observation Program called an enormous plume of Saharan dust is currently transporting westward over Cape Verde and further west towards northern South America, the Caribbean, and Central America. The desert dust is transported over long distances at relatively low altitudes, and this can affect the air quality on the Cape Verde Islands. And so, I have to wonder about this. If I'm looking at this, when I was down at the beach uh, yesterday uh, with a friend, we were both noticing that the sky looked awfully magenta. It had much more of a sunset sky look 
at like noon and one o'clock in the afternoon. It seemed very strange. A lot of pink and like magenta type of hues to it. I wonder if it could be the dust in the air. Very interesting.